performative, while sponsorship sometimes can be seen as transactional, which isn't really a negative thing, although it sometimes has negative connotations, um, but they can be more pivotal at different points in your career, and we're gonna dive a bit deeper into sponsorship now. As I mentioned before, sponsorship is different. It's a little more proactive. It's taking the information and directly intervening to try and advance someone's career through putting them in a high visibility situation to help them advance. In basic promotion and tenure terms, it's helping them build their national reputation and getting them evidence of impact of their work. Sponsorship typically requires someone who's well-connected in leadership and organizations or has an extensive network of friends or colleagues that they can draw upon. So typically, it's a senior person, but not always. You may have a colleague or a friend who's at a different institution who can help sponsor you for things. Sponsorship still needs the junior person, however, to have a clear vision of what they want to accomplish. At times, sponsorship is spoken of in the literature as more self-limited, um, because it is possible to be self-limited if, if my sponsee wants to be president of OGS, I don't know how to get you there, but I can get you to some places, and once you become president of OGS, I don't have to sponsor you to do that anymore. Um, and sponsorship really takes the form of calling up our friends, telling them I've got this super awesome junior faculty or mid-career faculty member who I think would be a great fit for their grand rounds or to serve on this key organizational leadership position um, or a great candidate for a leadership track. So it should be cautioned, however, that you should be prepared to do this for all of your faculty. I think when we talk about an equity lens, you can't just sponsor your super awesome, extroverted people who are sort of rocketing up the trajectory. You really should take time to, particularly as a department chair kind of person, make sure that you're providing sponsorship opportunities for everyone. There's less literature in academic medicine about sponsorship because it's a little bit more of a recent concept. Uh, but the business literature has many more publications and documents uh, that show that career advancement up the corporate ladder, particularly for women and for those who are traditionally underrepresented in leadership, that sponsorship is very important. A recent scoping review that was published in the, gen in the Journal of General and General Medicine found 16 studies that were mostly mixed methods and discussed sponsorship in academic medicine. They found the consensus that people who had been actively sponsored had benefits to their career advancement. It also has been documented that sometimes people who really didn't know that they were being sponsored, that just they had these invitations come out of the blue and they didn't realize that someone had actually put their name forward. And that's okay. Uh, the behind the scenes type of sponsorship is likely way more prevalent than most of us understand and realize. And a few studies that looked at sponsorship training found that really only a quarter of department chairs had received any formal training on how to effectively be a sponsor. Um, although it, many did try to use it as a faculty development tool. The scoping review also found that men tended to report more sponsorship opportunities, and in most of the studies, the senior people who were sponsors were men. However, a survey of faculty members uh, did show that 60% felt that sponsorship had played a significant role in their career advancement. Uh, and I wonder if the other 40% actually had sponsorship, but it was this more silent sponsorship. So one other study that I had read about when I was looking into this deeper uh, discussed how doing well with sponsorship, having people positioned in leadership roles with high visibility has really a trickle down impact on your department, helping secure grants, program opportunities, engaged faculty and trainees. And many relate that careers, as careers advance, the opportunity for sponsorship may seem to dwindle um, and that in mid-career, we need to have a really good focus on continuing to provide people in the mid-career opportunities so that they don't stall out in their careers and we want to get them reinvigorated. So I want to lean in a little bit to the impact data for women and underrepresented in medicine groups. Several studies commented on the value of sponsorship for women. However, two studies were all that really looked at it specifically in those underrepresented in medicine. In general, women at senior leader levels were more likely to report that they had been sponsored um, more than their male counterparts at leadership levels. Although another small study didn't find the same thing, so there's a little bit of conflict in the literature depending on the methods. Um, women at the assistant professor level were more likely than male peers to be receiving some kind of sponsorship, which was good. 
um, but less likely than men at the associate professor level. So it sort of evened out as people got that first promotion. For underrepresented medicine faculty interviewed, they really reported that sponsorship enhanced their sense of credibility and privileged access to influential networks that they didn't feel they might have access to otherwise. But again, this is really not well studied in an area that's ripe for study and, and uh, reports. Here I want to make a plea that we learn from this and that we double down on mentoring and sponsoring groups that are underrepresented and document the best practices. We need to help each other out with this. In the very near future, as we look at the changing demographics in our specialty and the, the gender imbalance in our incoming residents, we may be here in 10 or 20 years talking about the need to sponsor men in OBGYN. As, as we're talking now about the need to sponsor women in OBGYN. So I think we need to really make sure we're paying attention to history and that we keep these things robust. So while there's not a ton of best practices, particularly in OBGYN, Business School again has given us some advice on sponsorship best practices. So these are a few of them. The junior person really, again, as I said, clearly articulate and reflect. Reflection is really important as you're thinking about your career. Reflect on your career trajectory and your goals. It's crucial in finding somebody to sponsor you to help you get to the goals that you have. And these can be during annual reviews, chats with mentors. In some cases, your mentor is actually going to know the right person to serve as your sponsor. So make sure you're communicating. Senior leaders and even mid-career people should be trained in the importance of sponsorship for their partners and for trainees. Getting them started on a good path early in their career is going to pay dividends later down the road being intentional, looking for opportunities is also the key. Many of us get invitations to do all sorts of things. Some of them are actually legitimate things that you want to do. But a lot of times we have to or we need to say no. And we should actually think about checking in with a junior partner. If we feel like it's a good opportunity, but I just don't have time. Maybe my partner, who is two years before she's going to get promoted, that'd be a good opportunity for them to get a really good speaking opportunity or to be on a paper or something. So I think really trying to understand how, as you get on in your career, how can you start to strategically give away things that are gonna really enhance other people's careers. And it's important to start early in someone's career. Uh, try to be equitable while being intentional about advancing traditionally excluded groups. Data show how often outgoing how high, high performers tend to accumulate more opportunities than your sort of introvert people. And so make sure that you reach out to those introverted folks in your department as well. So I want to pause here to thank some of the sponsors who have really helped me in my career. While I'm not sure that all of my trainees would feel the same way, that, that uh, I have a ton to thank uh, 